um, happy to open the floor to questions, uh, questions from the audience. Yeah, hello. Um, thanks so much, um, Etienne, again. I mean, this was very, very insightful, you know, like, you know, sharing, I mean, from your own experience, like, uh, I mean, I mean, what you think that, you know, find out should look, look at when trying to start. I think like it's very, very challenging actually uh, to start at first, but like Etienne today, I mean, like you just like, you just have to start. I mean, you just have to make that first step, you know, and then you yeah. have to also like, you know, I mean, decide on what you, you're trying to, the solution that you're trying to build. First, I mean, find the problem that you're trying to solve then your solution. Then you work towards like getting a team, right? I mean, I mean, like um, leveraging on, you know, maybe the social media or, you know, like just, just asking questions and you could just like get your team. Then once you get the team, I mean, it's not like about being patient and like being consistent, right? And I don't think like there's, there's any other better way to put that, but yeah, thanks so much for, you know, for sharing your, your experience. No problem, sir, no problem. My pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure. yeah so, uh, uh, hoping to get as much um, um, questions from the audience. Um, hopefully, uh, as I said in the beginning, hopefully this is going to be a uh, back and forth kind of a conversation where people would ask questions. Happy to share my thoughts, ideas. Don't take they take it with a grain of salt. Uh, go test mm -hmm. it. Um, see if it makes sense. Uh, I came to these conclusions based on experience, obviously, right? Um, mm -hmm. And hey. Someone might disagree. I'm happy to happy to engage in that conversation and learn. Right? Uh, there are no experts in this industry. That's the first thing I'll tell you. There are no true, experts. True, true. Crypto is kind of like blockchain and digital assets. This whole industry is like someone would throw you off an airplane with a parachute and a piece of paper with the guidelines. This is how you create a parachute, right? We're literally figuring out the or the way you're taking the way as we as we go along. Yeah, right. So uh, that's pretty much um, all right. So happy to take any questions from the audience and because um, they're closing this place. Um, so, yeah, go ahead. All right, sure. So um, let's I mean, let's jump into the questions. And guys that are tuning in, please, um, if you haven't, if you have like any more questions, I mean, like, please keep it coming. And I mean, like, thank you guys for tuning in. I mean, like, I think like, um, this section will be worthwhile, you know, like, I hope like you guys have, you know, taken one or two things from, from the keynote that Etienne have shared so far. So, um, yeah, the first question is, is this, um, I also paste it on the chart. So this question is from Tim Krupia. And he's asking like, um, I mean, it's first of all, I mean, I appreciate the time that you took Etienne, you know, to share your experience. And he's asking that TRGC has invested in amazing projects like Pokemon, Pokadot, and Ekaj. So he's asking like, um, how does how does TRGC support projects that they invest in, apart from providing capital? Yeah, that's a that, that's a good question. That that, that, that is the question, right? Uh, and it ties into the whole value add debate. Uh, for both projects, we run validators. So we're, we're part of the initial group that spins up the network. So we lock in our assets to get the network running, right? Uh, I think that's the minimum funds and PC should be doing. So uh, that's the key support we offer. And uh, with a long-term focus, right? We're locking these assets in five, uh, five, 10 years. And uh, we're bullish on these projects that we haven't seen their all-time highs anytime soon. Uh, that is, if you want to... Um, have price being a leading indicator on the value of the project, right? Um, so running validators is the minimum. Second is evangelizing. Third is helping with you know, like uh, growing the community, the setting up local chapters, whether it's where I'm based in Amsterdam. Um, so that is uh, a couple of key areas we fear. That is why we stay close to infrastructure because we already have that in house like spinning up in uh, validators, nodes, and node running for projects. Uh, so that's the first thing we start with, and it fits in our lane. Yeah, thanks so much for that question. Uh, yeah, and um, yeah, thanks so much for answering that, Etienne. And I must also, also, also confess, you know, from Zen Finance perspective, perspective, like, I mean, Mr. Etienne have been like, you know, very, very helpful about from providing capital. I mean, he was like, like I said, he was one of the early 
investors that we have. And I mean, like apart from providing capital, I mean, he's been like helpful, you know, I'm trying to grow our community, like, you know, giving some other advice, you know, on how we could like, you know, grow and like scale our products. So yeah, that's like, I mean, this is not just like, I mean, this is like a very, very, it's like very, this is like, um, what's the word again? But I'm a living test point, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, we, we saw this. Thank you for so yeah, um, the second question is is from um, Derek BTC. So he's asking that um, during your section that you mentioned that TRGC mainly invest in uh, infrastructure projects. So he's asking, um, what are some of the important factors that you have to see in teams, like teams before you choose to invest or not to invest in them? So what are you looking at for teams? Um, first, we start obviously uh, teams. What we're looking at, what's their ambition? Right. Um, if you're talking about the human side of things, because you're investing in human, humans, right? What is the ambition of the team, and what is their plan to, to make this happen? Right. This ambitious, this, um, these ambitious ideas. How they're going to take this to market? Right. So, what is that long-term vision for these guys? Um, do they can they explain that clearly as possible? Can they put it in clear words what it is they're building? Clarity is a good indicator of understanding. Right, uh, you can convey that in clear words. Um, it, it's a good indicator of that. Second is that ambition. Third is that resilience. Is what I call. I think about it a lot. Um, I'm looking for bear market proof founders. Right, it's easy to abandon a project. Like, hey, we're in a bear market. Uh, let's go do something else. Let's raise mo- Let's do, raise new money and go do something else. Right, it's people sticking with you know, the original focus. They might pivot and polish along the way on that journey, but at least the, the core vision is going to be there. So we're looking for those type of founders with those features um, of resiliency, that deep understanding of the industry they're building on, they're building in their part of. And uh, those are some of the key factors we're looking for. And of course, um, is everything in place? Right, as far as uh, have a, a solid CTO, because um, I often say it takes two guys to start a project: Steve Jobs and a Wozniak, right? The marketeer and the CTO, right? It's those two guys, and they can build a group around it, and that starts expanding, and now suddenly you have this corporate juggernaut, right? But it starts with two guys, and oftentimes you you see that couple, the more business marketing oriented knows how to package it so the masses can adopt it versus the CTO. And it's like saying Steve Wozniak alone couldn't build Apple, Steve Jobs alone couldn't build Apple. So it's that symbiotic relationship, uh, what I call one plus one is three, right? Uh, and then uh, it's a famous quote, the whole is bigger than the sum of the parts, right? Um, you're looking for those features, but it starts with those two, right? And uh, maybe you could add a third person, the organizer, who's going to organize all of this, right? Um, like that meticulous planner, organizer on the team. Um, so you're looking for those features uh, in people um, and the ambition of people to, like, they really want to put some art out there, something they're proud of. And you heard me mentioning Mona Lisa, right? Like uh, people, some of these founders, the project they're building, it's their art. They're proud of it, right? And uh, I, I love that. I love that. I love that in a founder. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, I hope so too. Like, I mean, there was like, thank you very much for, I mean, for the answer. Um, Etienne. So, um, I mean, um, you guys have heard it all. I mean, like, if you are, if you're considering, like, maybe if you're like, or if you already have like an idea and you're looking out, you know, considering who to bring in to make a team, I think it's, I mean, it starts with first evaluating your your strong point. I mean, if you if it's just like one person at a time or one person, you know, try, I mean, trying to get someone else to come a team, you try to, you know, like um, where your strong point. So if you're like more of a tech person, you know. I mean, that means like the CTO role fits you then. You're not looking for for that product guy, right? Someone that can, you know, package the product once he's ready, ready and you know, let people know about the product. Yeah. So um we'll have one more question. Um oh, is it? Yeah, we'll have another question from Team Krupa. 
so actually like this this is like a funny question though but i mean let's i mean i'll bring it up so the question is um is asking what was your outlook on the crypto market this last quarter of 2021 and also the q1 first quarter of 2022 and it's asking do you think there will be like a beer market next year um poor. uh i think it's a couple of ways she could start answering or even try attempt to answer this question right um it's a question that's been around a lot right is this a top um right um you know, um people be calling top signals for months right remember when the market corrected a bit bitcoin went back to 30k in i think what was it may june um uh, the thing you look for those macro drivers right one of them is being nfts keep crypto on the front pages right so that is a big driver of new money coming into this space right so th there's new attention i saw a stat recently on twitter 40 percent of people in crypto now only joined less than one year ago right so that's that's a lot that's a lot that's huge Wow. Right? They they barely made that made that leap. Like, hey, let me let me look deeply into this um, into this industry. Because remember in 18 and 19, the overarching narrative was oh, this thing is going to zero. Crypto is dead. Right. Um so bear marking or not, there's always gonna be good deals out there. If you know what you're investing in, your thesis is solid. So oftentimes my best performers this year and last year are deals I did in the bear market. So bear market are for selling feet and bull markets are for harvesting, right? So if this is the end of the bull market, it basically means, okay, let's start selling seeds. Let's start investing, uh, provided you, your liquidity management is up there. And uh, because if this is the top, this is a, the top of the bull market, you potentially need to be like, taking profits and taking money off the table. But again, as psychology would tell us, uh, taking profits is one of the hardest things in, uh, for any investor, right? Because uh, it might go higher, right? That's, the, that's oftentimes the, the trick that's fooling us. So um, where do I see the market? I think this rally will continue a little bit. And uh, I hate predictions, to be honest. Uh, uh, I think this rally will continue for a bit, like I said. Um, um, the, the outlook has never been so bullish. The amount of people that still could be onboarded to the industry. Uh, automations and front ends are getting better. So the onboarding is a lot smoother than in 16 and 17, if you will. Um, so yeah, where I see the market in 22, it's going to be never as healthy as in 2022. Right, it's getting better and better and better. What a time to be alive! This is the most beautiful industry I've been a part of. Nothing else, nothing comes close to this. Uh, this is the most beautiful industry I've been a part of. This is, uh, if you're not in crypto right now, what, what the hell are you even doing right now? Right? Um, so w w I would uh, tell anyone go on YouTube, there's so many quality content producers on YouTube, so many quality stuff you could consume, guys on uh, even Twitter. If you know who, what you're looking for and filter out the noise, uh, I have a simple rule. The more people talk about the price, the more I ignore it. Like, like price predictions, I ignore. Everyone that talks about price on Twitter, like Bitcoin is going to be a million dollars in two weeks, I ignore that. Right? Or on the downside, we're going back to zero, I ignore that too. Uh, I feel like the best way to get an understanding of what this industry is, where it's going, what's being built, what's being built by people, is to stay as close to possible with, for instance, you follow guys from the Ethereum Foundation, CTOs of projects. What are they tweeting about? What's their outlook on the industry? I want to stay as close as possible to the builders. I ignore all price tag. I find it annoying that on television, regular news outlets, the conversation is the price. Right, Bitcoin is up 10% today. Okay, the news starts on BBC. Bitcoin is down 20%. The volatile asset. That's that's the that's not the conversation, guys. That is the most boring aspect of crypto. That's not it. Bitcoin down or up. It's not the conversation. What's being built actually? And understanding blockchain crypto in this in this bigger historical context of technology, 
right? P2P, the internet. Uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you approach it from that angle, suddenly your mind blows up like what's possible, right? We're, we're building a global new payment rail and value transaction rail. How is the price of Bitcoin? How does that matter to me? Right, that's, uh, that's crazy, isn't it? So that's, that's what I would give anyone. Anyway. Like, uh, bear or bull, um, have a longer outlook, right? Bulls come, bears come, they go. Um, so go deeper. Uh, abstract that for a bit and go deeper to the builders. They're on Twitter. They feed their ideas daily. Look for CTOs, research, head of research. If you type in crypto head of research, you'll find a, a couple of great accounts. You follow everyone from the Ethereum Foundation. You find a couple of big brains that would share the most beautiful insights into what is actually being worked on with Ethereum. So I feel like that's where that's the that should be the conversation. That should be on the front page, right? That should be on the that should be the leading topic on BBC Nightly News or CNN, right? But I get it, right? It's uh, if it bleeds, it leads, right? If it bleeds, it's on the front page. Right. Bitcoin is down 20%. Uh, the market lost half a billion today, and that's the conversation. And to me, I ignore. That's what I call noise. That's what I call noise. That's, that's, it's to be ignored. Right? That's not it. And if you're in the capacity to travel, travel to hackathons, which is why you guys are doing this. So kudos to Ugo and his team. Right? Uh, you're giving people the opportunity to get into that deeper conversation of what is actually technology, what's being built, who's doing what. You're connecting with people. This is global. This is global, guys. This is, um, I'm excited about this, if you can tell already. Uh, there's nothing beautiful I've been a part of, man. There's nothing beautiful. Yeah, Long like... answer. I hope that at least try to capture that. I have yeah. to cut it out, guys. I have to run. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, guys, uh, Emmanuel, Udo, and uh, I'll yeah. catch you guys in the future. All right. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah. Thank, thanks so much for taking our time. It's uh, out of your busy Lisbon. Enjoy, enjoy Lisbon, please. Yeah. Okay. Take care. Take care, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah. Thank you guys for tuning in. I mean, it was very, very insightful section with Etienne. I mean, I, I hope like you guys learned one or two things. Of course, like. Uh, it's been a pleasure having someone like Etienne and uh, share his experience. So, um, thank guys for tuning in, and um, yeah, catch you guys on the next section. I hope you guys have a lovely day or evening, depending on what part of the world you're in. Yeah, I'll see you guys later. Bye.